Welcome back to another episode of our Pokemon VGC 2019 Battle Series. I hope you're all well, had a great weekend, and before we get started, I just need to give each and every one of you a huge thank you, big shout out for all the suggestions that we got last week, all the comments as well. You're all incredible and uh, make doing this sort of content so worthwhile, honestly, it's amazing. As I say, I hope you had a great weekend, what you're up to. We are going to be back today. We said on Friday that we ended up with a couple of losses. So, the big problems for the core team was the X and Y, the Lunala, Xerneas combination. Um, so, we've had some really good suggestions. We had Tyranitar from Mario. We had Greninja from Stu. We had Nihiligo. We had one that I'm going to use today from Aaron, and that was Raikou. So, here is the team. That we've got Raikou. Now, on face value, we do have a little bit of a worse matchup against Groudon, Volcarona, things like that specifically. But we've got Tex in there to get around them. So just to recap the team for you, the team is in the description below. So if you'd like to go peruse over that, try it out. If you try it, do let me know how you get on with it and how you find it. It is a really fun team to play. So we've got the Zygarde there, we've got Coil on it, we've got the Thousand Arrows, we've got the Extreme Speed kind of standard. We've put the Sorgelium Z on Sogaleo, so we've got that Steel Z type attack that we can utilise if we want to. Obviously nuke Xerneas at any time we would like, which is really useful. Kept the Superpower, kept the Wide Guard, kept the Protect. Got the Finny is exactly the same. Incineral, we've put Snarl on there over a knockoff to kind of alleviate those special attackers a little bit more. We've got Raikou, obviously the new member of the team over the Venusaur. Now this, this Raikou build is very interesting. So it can take a full power water spot from Kyogre in the rain. It can also Snarl a Lunala, chip it, break the Shadow Shield, and allow Sogaleo to take the Z move, the Menacing Moonrays, Maelstrom, however you pronounce it, and then return back with its own Z move to pick up the knockout there, which is quite nice. It's a combination that we're not really going to rely on too much, but we know it's there if we can make use of it. Snarl's really good for Xerneas. We take a plus one Moonblast from a Xerneas with this Raikou Proxaberry. We've also got Reflect on there as well, just to bolster those defensive stats of the team. It means that we are able to take a Groudon Precipice Blade straight up without an Intimidate support from the Incineron, and Toxicroak did so well last week. I feel like we don't want to keep it in. Now, before I lock into this team, there is another team that I would like to show you. It's got a little bit of a variation of the Raikou, and that is the Tyranitar. Now, this team is really interesting. We will feature this at some point this week, but it's got Scarf Titar there, and it can do, I think, quite a lot of work. Now, if you would, guys would like to see the Titar in action, let me know, and I will make sure to feature it. If not, if you'd like to continue with this one, that's fine. So... Without further ado, let's get into today's episode. I'd better get some music on. It says music, so hopefully the levels are fine. Hopefully it doesn't take too long to find our first opponent of the day. We'll get some music on. Um, lead title defense, why not? We always kick into this one on a Monday. But hopefully as well, we've obviously got the green screen working now. As you guys have said, would be better without any overlay at all so that it doesn't cut into text and things like that. I've tweaked as well the actual capture card. So hopefully the graphics capture card wise are coming through a lot cleaner, a lot clearer for you guys. Hopefully the audio as well and we're fine tuning everything. So hopefully everything is coming across really good for you guys in the green screen makes it a bit more aesthetically pleasing and um, do let me know though your comments are always appreciated it's taken a little bit longer than i'd like to to find an opponent so if it does take a little while we have to search again i'll come straight back to when we find an opponent we have our first opponent of the day it is teo from italy playing a team of it's going to be incineral groudon typically Xerneas, Charizard, Raichu, and Venusaur, so we're going up against today. So, straight away in with Groudon, we didn't play one single Groudon last week, going up against that Groudon Xerneas core here. It's going to be really difficult, we need to make sure that we are managing the Groudon very well, so Sogolea has a better time dealing with this Xerneas. Um, we have to be also very careful around the Charizard, that can outspeed our Sogolea and do a lot of damage. So, I think... For, for starters, we definitely want Incineral. Um, I do probably want to bring Raikou, although the Raichu is a terrible, terrible Pokemon for us to see. It doesn't stop us setting up the Reflect and utilizing Snarls, though. Um, definitely want Tapu Fini for some terrain support against that Venusaur in particular, and maybe Zygarde. So maybe we don't bring Ra Raikou. 
to this one, really. Um, the reflect would be very useful. I think we might go Sogaleo, Finny, and Zygod up front. It's kind of difficult, and this kind of answers a question for us a little bit, because if we're not bringing Raikou to this game, although there is the Raichu, there is a lot of things in there that don't make it accessible for the Raikou to really perform very well, and it's not really meant for the Groudon matchup. If the team can cope with this sort of matchup reasonably well, it means that we can alleviate that slot that we've got for the Raikou for those other matchups, and then when we bump into the Eveltals, the Lunala, cause then we can test it there and see if it works you know how we want it to so we've got our leads out we go incineral we go sogaleo we don't get affected by the intimidate from the opposing side of the field uh, we do see that we are this slot incineral though we do get the intimidate onto both the incineral and the groudon and we could just fake um there's a part of me that wants to switch in tapu finny here start getting some Icy wind control. Um, we could wide guard with Sogaleo, but it is a little bit risky. Um, and I think I'm just going to protect because if they fake out our incineral, then we're in a lot of trouble. Well, Ground, I'm going to switch out. We're just going to see it switch straight out. Right, you coming onto the field. And you've also got to consider as well the opposing incineral could just flare blitz into our Sogaleo. So that's something we need to keep in mind as well. But we will get the terrain up. This prevents the Raichu from going crazy with those nuzzles. And uh, we'll just protect with Sogaleo going into this first turn. And likely we may see a U-turn from... No, it's just that flare blitz. So it was, it was the right call that we make going into that one. Now I could switch out Tapu Fini into Zygarde here and just superpower the incineral but I'm not feeling massively confident about really leaving it in when the sun's up um, and I could get Zygarde in for Sogaleo right now and we could potentially swagger it um, that might not be a bad option you could swagger yeah and bring in Zygarde and get Zygarde powered up now keep the Sogaleo for later when that Xerneas probably hits the field and um, start making use of it as soon as we can. So here we go, we'll get in, get this Misty Seed proct, which is always, always what we want to do. There's the fake out. It's going to be into Sogleo, which is perfect. Means we do get this swagger off, and hopefully we see a Flare Blitz and not a U-turn, because the U-turn would cause us a few problems. And there's a the Flare Blitz, which is ideal. It's going to be into the Zygarde. But I got in a lovely position now, like really nice position because the Incineroar is threatened, the Raichu is threatened, um, we can Icy Wind, so it means that we're, we're staying in control of this match going into the next turn. And just Thousand Arrows here, there's no threat of, of, of Wide Guard or anything like that coming out, so we're just going to see the Incineroar switch out. I'm going to see that Groudon come back in, we are plus two. The Incineroar wants to go out because it can potentially come back in and intimidate, spam us. I'm going to see a Wild Charge there. From the Raichu, but it will go down this turn. Uh, we will get an icy wind onto this Groudon, which is super important, and then this plus 2000 arrows, which is going to be really nice. We'll get rid of the Raichu, it'll do a nice chunk of damage to that Groudon in the process, and uh, it does open the door for the Incineroar to come back in for my opponent, or potentially, potentially, the Xerneas, which you've got to be a little bit careful about still, because we aren't our complete form yet. We have taken a little bit of chip damage, but we still should be taking attacks from... Yeah, it's just going to be the Incineroar here coming back in. It's going to have that fake out pressure going into this next turn. But I think as well what we can do is just switch Finny out. Um, at this point, Incineroar is is expendable, I would say. Although it's very valuable to us, that Intimidate is going to be more than, more than useful for us in this situation just to reduce the attack damage of the Groudon and that Incineroar um, and Zygarde's still in a really nice position on plus one and just in case we see a U-turn from the, the opposing Incineroar this next turn and bring in the Xerneas then it kind of alleviates that so we've got the fake out support going into the next turn as well so let's see protect from Zygarde we'll just play it really safe here don't need to take any risks there's the U-turn it is into the Zygarde though, so we catch my opponent out on that side of the field there. So we do see just a Precipice Blades being pinged out from this Groudon. And my opponent trying to get that, that 
at uh, Xerneas onto the field. Now, I do not really worry about the Groudon too much, so I'm going to fake out the Incineroar, stop the U-turn, and just go for this Thousand Arrows once again. If we take a Precipice Blades, it's mm, maybe it procs us into our... Yeah, we're not going to see that. We're just going to see Groudon Protect now. There's the fake out into the opposing incineral. We're going to stop that moving. Plus one thousand arrows should get this incineral, and I, I really wouldn't complain if we didn't either. Kind of postponing that. Yeah, that, that I mean that is perfect for us. Post postponing the Xerneas coming onto the field is a lot more useful for us in this position because now we can thousand arrows get this Groudon down to a really low position and then if we lose Incineroar we get Sogaleo onto the field we can then extreme speed that Groudon the following turn to get the chip that we need onto it um, I'm going to U-turn out onto the Incineroar just in case we see a hard switch um, and then Sogaleo can come on and just clean up the, uh, the the Xerneas as we're going to see here so Xerneas is actually going to hit the field now and I mean I really don't mind this either because at the same time Xerneas coming in taking this plus 1000 arrows and uh, a random name we might be able to do it today we're going to see a berry proc on the ground on which yeah we don't really want to be seeing but at the same time we are going to get a U-turn off with Incineroar What's this Groudon doing? I mean, we have... I'm pretty sure we Icy Winded it, didn't we, earlier? Um, do we get Finny in now? I think we could possibly... We could get Sogaleo in. I just don't want to take a Precipice Blade, so that's why we're going to get Finny in. <sighs> Sogaleo we need to keep. We need to keep. It's like main prerogative right now for us. Let's see... Oh, it's going Swords Dance. <sighs> Trixie. Trixie Groudon. What is this Groudon sitting on? Yeah, minus one speed. We got the Icy Wind. I'm forgetting again that we've Icy Wind. It's like that Cortana episode last week all over again. And if you did miss any of the episodes from last week, I'll pop a, I'll pop a card up right above here and you can go back and check last week's games out. There was a lot of good games we had last week. So we've got the Xerneas. We've got the Groudon coming out. It is going to be plus one. We'll get Incineroar back in now. Um, and we will just 1,000 hours once again. If this Xerneas decides to go for... Uh, I hope it doesn't go for a Moonblast here. We should take it. And we will outspeed the Groudon. So we will be able to pick up the KO onto the Xerneas. If we can take the Moonblast. Which I'm hoping... Ooh! Oh, it's into the Incineroar slot. Ha! Huh. That surprised me. Expecting the Protect... Onto the Zygarde, we're going to be able to clean up the the, the Xerneas. Oh, it's so close. Come on, you're breaking our hearts here. <laughs> but Zygarde dodges because it is a ninja, of course. Um, and we'll be able to get the Tapu Fini back onto the field. We can extreme speed and we can swagger once again if we would like to. Or we can just... Um, I mean, do we swagger again? We probably want to swagger again the Zygarde and extreme speed the Xerneas. I don't worry about the Groudon too much right now. I feel like it's so pressured right now. It's not got room to go for a Sword Stance. It could do this turn. 100%. Okay, the Groudon going to protect. And we'll get that extreme speed. So, a random name. We've done it. We beat the Xerneas. We're back this week. We're going to get this Swagger off. Put us back on to plus two. To put us to plus one when that Incineroar comes back onto the field now. And we'll, we've got more than enough to deal with, with what's in front of us. Just get around this fake out pressure. We'll probably see a sword stance from the guard on. I would imagine. Um, but I'm going to just icy wind with with Finny. Um, or do a heal pulse. I kind of don't really want to because I want us to get the the Megazord form <laughs> in this match it's like the Zygarde show all over but hopefully in the next one we can bring that Raikou because the Raikou I feel does a really nice job but like I said at the start of this episode I think the one thing that really we were kind of looking for is if we could handle this sort of core well enough with with without even considering that slot which I feel like we can do um, now we we got away with a few turns here and there course but that's going to happen in any match so and we could have protected on those turns as well 
which opened the door. So I think the core in general. Um, did I not select a move there? Oh, come on. I did select. I don't know. My time went down, but okay. Our opponent disconnects, which is really sad. But we got the Xerneas, and we were definitely going to win that match. So regardless of the disconnect, good game to my opponent. And uh, we'll move on to our next one. And uh, hopefully it's just as good as that first one to kick us off today. Um, but like I said at the start of the episode, guys, we've got the, the Tyranitar variant as well. So we can try that. And there's a huge part of me. I was speaking to uh, one of our good patrons of the channel, Pokemarty, earlier. And I was telling him, there's such a big part of me that wants to... I want to keep this quite serious so we can have a really good team at the end of the week. But there's a part of me that's like, I just want to do fun things. And Drapion was is one Pokemon I really want to build into this core. <laughs> but I'm like, I can't do it. I can't do it. But I really do. I feel like Drapion could do some work. It makes our Groudon matchup way worse. But uh, it could do. It could do some. It could do some stuff. It could definitely do some stuff. Anyway, we've got our next opponent. So let's hop into team preview. Before we run out of time, because we've got Kyogre, Ditto, Ludicolo, Driftblim, Ivaltal, and Tapu Fi Tapu Lele. Tapu Lele. <laughs> Not Tapu Fini. This is a really good one here. We've got the uh, for Raikou. We've got the Kyogre, the Ivaltal core here. It's a really nice combination. And we sort of have a lot of success in the Sun series. Not so much in the Moon series, but it's still got a lot of potential. You've got the Ludicolo there with the fake ad support. It's got that swift swim ability that pairs so nicely with the Kyogre. Got to be a little bit careful of that ditto. It's probably an imposter ditto. It's there for a Xerneas check. And imagine with maybe a red card attached to it. It kind of makes sense in this sort of core you've got the tapu lele and that drift blim as well combination you know you're going to have the the psychic terrain and then the unburden doubling the speed of that drift blim so i think we're going to lead raikou in this match um i will bring uh do i bring sogaleo probably not up front um i definitely want zygarde i don't think i want i definitely want toxic rock and tapu finny they're the ones we're going with Running out of time, but it, we, at least we bring the Zygarde. We've not brought the Sogaleo, so um, it's a little sad. We haven't seen much of it today, but there's plenty of episodes left in this week for us to, to utilize Sogaleo. It's such a big Pokemon. It performed so well last week, so if Zygarde takes over this week, then I don't mind too much because the one thing that we've got going for us is that... Um, Zygarde can steal the show this week. Sogaleo's had its time. But maybe with the Tapu Lele included in the team here, you know, Sogaleo wouldn't have been a bad choice. And the Veltal really covers the Tapu Lele quite nicely from that specific threat. Okay, so um, we can go for a Thunderbolt here. I think we'll probably just go for a Snarl. I should have been paying more attention to when the pressure and when the Psychic Terrain went up because this Lele could be scarfed i'm gonna go for the snarl and i think i'm gonna switch zygod out into tapu fini get rid of this psychic terrain because we just don't want this being something that we have to um okay we're gonna see ditto hit the field now what's what's little old ditto gonna do it's gonna turn into uh, zygod she don't mind too much hopefully although the the, the raikou it's a nice play for my opponent expecting maybe a t-ball into that slot but we ain't going for that because we're going to get this misty terrain up. And there's a Moonblast. It's going to be into Zygarde and into that Tapu Fini here. And we take it pretty comfortably. We'll get the Snarl off, which is really nice. Um, if we can start we can start doing some damage this next turn if we'd like to. We could set up a Reflect as well, which is going to be super useful. We're going to see a red card. It's going to throw out the, um, the Raikou, so we're not going to have an option for that. Ooh, perfect. Perfect timing, Mr. Zygarde. <laughs> Perfect timing. Um, okay, so I think this next turn, this is probably scoffed Tapu Lele as well. Um, so I think what we'll do is we will just protect Zygarde here and go for the Icy Wind support with our Tapu Fini. Tapu Fini is such good support here. It's not really threatened too much from the Ditto, which is now a Zygarde, or the Tapu Lele. And if we can just reduce the speed on things, we might force the Tapu Lele out here as well. Oh, I mean, we might, might be playing a little bit passive. As if the, uh, mm, this is one thing that I do worry about a little bit. 
But if that Lele is scoffed, it means the Kyogre isn't. So we should be outspeeding it the next turn. Um, and it just depos and ditto protects. That's fine. I mean, that is totally fine. So we can just go get this Icy Wind, hopefully, onto the Kyogre. And this is what I mean about a little bit passive. Like, we're not taking advantage of um, a turn where we could potentially be getting an attack off. Uh, the Lele was snarled, so minus one. So... It's fine though, it's fine. We're not we're not too far behind. Um so I think now we'll go a thousand arrows and we will go for a swagger into Zygod and hopefully get that set up and uh, plus two should be doing a lot of damage to this Kyogre. My opponent still probably feels like they're maybe on the back foot, but we've got to be a little bit careful about a potential Thunder coming out into Tapu Fini or an Ice Beam into our Zygarde. But we do get the plus two, which is really nice. So we are going to get this 1,000 hours. We know outspeed in this Kyogre. We're going to get some really good damage onto it this next turn. Oh, we just missed the, missed the knockout. A critical hit as well. That's huge. There's the Thunder. Okay, that's fine. This is fine because we're going to get Raikou back in um, right now. My opponent has no switches into the Tapu Lele. I think taking something down here would have put us way further behind than we actually want it to be. So we'll get this Raikou in. And we outspeed both targets on my opponent's side of the field with, with a, a Zygarde. So we've just got the Eveltal to worry about now. So, do we Snarl or do we Reflect set that up? Because the Eveltal could be... A physical variant so it's, it's kind of nice just to have that option later on if we would like to um yeah i think we will reflect because we've got room now to pick up the double knockout here on on both things on my opponent's side of the field if we get the reflect up i'm just doing this in case the veltal is physical and that's the thing we've got to we've got to keep in mind kyoga switching out for the tapu lele which is really interesting because it's Potentially going to go down here to a thousand arrows. We're going to see the Ditto protect. Obviously, we can't utilize extreme speed anymore because of this psychic terrain being active. But Raikou putting in some work getting this light screen up. Going to get the thousand arrows. If we can take down the Lele here, I think we can close this game up pretty comfortably. Oh, it's so close. It is so close. Um, all right. I think we got thousand arrows, and we go snarl. Yeah, because thousand arrows will take down the ditto. We'll take a moonblast into Zygarde potentially. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, wow, well, I mean we take that so comfortably. Get the snarl off. I'm gonna take down the lele. Reduce the the special attack on the ditto. The thousand arrows from our Zygarde should take that down. It's a shame that we're not. We, we've not taking a little bit more damage so we can get the the power construct activated but i mean it's 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 fine isn't it the kyogre comes back in it is going to be um really prone to going down to a thunderbolt from raikou and we're not worrying about the evil till now throwing out a potential big z move because of that reflect that we've got up with the raikou which does kind of cover things quite nicely here for us so evil coming back in and for one pokemon that's give us so many problems Last week, when we faced it, it's not causing us too many problems right this second. So we'll get the Thunderbolt off into the Kyogre. We'll go for that 1,000 hours again. We'll ground that Eveltal. And again, it can't go for a Sucker Punch if it's got it. It's got to go for um, a Foul Play, which it potentially could do. But again, I'm not massively worried because as long as you get the Kyogre, then Raikou can deal with this this Eveltal pretty handily. So we'll get the Thunderbolt into the Kyogre. It's not going to protect this turn we do take it down so just this lowly eveltal to consider it is going to go for a knockoff because of the reflect though we take that pretty comfortably get this thousand arrows off and now the zygarde's going to be in range hopefully of a thunderbolt yeah 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 i think minimum it's about 49 mm, mm, about 44 percent on an assault vest variant so we can actually uh, we can't extreme speed it because it is grounded now. So we'll go for the 1,000 hours again. And uh, Raikou going to steal the show to finish us off today, which is brilliant. And there we go. We get the forfeit from my opponent. And uh, we are able to pick up another win. So a really good start for us today, guys. And uh, we got to showcase a couple of the new features to the team, um, especially having the Zygarde take down a Xerneas, which is what we wanted to do. And then having the new member of the team, the Raikou, come in and put in so much work. The pressure with the Snarl, the Reflect 
picks it up, and then just the T-Bolt picking up really two KOs at the end, which I know one of them was a forfeit, but, you know, we're going to take that, aren't we? Right, we'll end it there, guys. It's been a lot of fun. We'll be back tomorrow. Remember to let me know in the comments down below about the Tito if you'd like to see that at some point this week. But we will continue tomorrow's episode with the Raikou and probably come on to the Tito maybe Wednesday, then revert back and then make a decision Thursday, Friday about what the final build is going to be going into the, uh, the, the last stages of the week. So thank you so much for tuning in though, guys. Let me know in the comment section below what you think of the team today. And uh, I'll look forward to reading through those and replying to you as soon as I am able to. So take care of yourselves. Have a great day, whatever you're up to. And um, I will see you all for another episode tomorrow. So until then, guys, take care and bye-bye.